Hey everybody, what is going on? Hexlex here with another Master Duel video for you guys today. We have yet another combo guide. This one is... Yeah, no, I don't, haven't done this uh, combo guide just yet. This is going to be for Virtual World. I was trying to think if I had done one uh, before the adventure update, and no, I haven't actually now that I think about it. So, uh, even though this is technically an adventure Virtual World combo guide, this is just a general purpose Virtual World combo guide as well. Now, this one is going to be structured a little bit differently than some of my other combo guides I've done in the past. Although, I'm trying to think, there was one deck... Well, I've done this in, in past videos where, like, you know, I'll, I'll explain specific combos and then sometimes at the end, you know, it's like, let's do some test hands and see, um, you know, what combos we can make with certain hands. But that's actually going to be the bulk of the content here for the Virtual World Combo Guide because there are, I mean, there are specific combo lines you do if you open specific combinations of cards, but... Um, Virtual World is a little bit different in how its combos kind of play out in that you tend to freestyle, I guess, quote unquote, a little bit more uh, than a lot of other decks. And what I mean by freestyling, I mean, I'm sure a lot of you, you know, know, but um, <laughs> what I mean by freestyling is like, it, rather than follow a strict, dedicated, like, you follow this step, then this step, then this step combo guide, or combo line, rather. You kind of just like see what you've got in hand and kind of just figure out what you can make with it. And that sounds a little bit daunting. Uh, it might be equally daunting if you go because there are certain guides like on Master Duel Meta for Virtual World and they'll have like a combo guide section and you'll see like eight or nine different lines. And you might see that and think because I definitely had this moment where when I was, uh, you know, looking to learn Virtual World and I saw that and I was like, what? I have to memorize like eight or nine different lines just to play this deck. But the, the truth is you kind of don't. Uh, at the same time, like, yeah, it is useful to know all those lines, and you will end up learning, or at least the way that I learned this deck. Um, you know, I can only speak from my own experience and how I learned. Obviously, everybody learns in different ways, but um, I just wanted to, you know, put my experience out there so that way uh, maybe those who are a bit intimidated, like I was definitely, um, by learning this deck or having issues learning this deck might be able to think of it in a different way that might be more useful. Because the way I thought of it was more like, you know, I just started kind of like messing around with hands in solo mode and being like, okay, this is like, because here's the thing, the deck does have a lot of different lines it can do, but it's also pretty intuitive in how it plays generally. So if you can get a good feel for that, generally speaking, then I think that's going to be, you know, good enough to, um, you know, just kind of help you moving forward. Because like, I definitely couldn't tell you like all eight or nine of those lines off the top of my head, like this, the individual steps for every single one of them. I just kind of know how the deck flows. See, this is kind of the part that is a little bit subjective, and I do like to say more objective with uh, guides like this, but um, again, I'm trying something a little bit different with this one. So um, I actually saw this suggested in a comment. Um, let me let me see something real quick. One second. I want to see if I can find the person who commented and asked for if I could do a Tyler a Tyler, a Tyler, so he's found the name, but a Tyler Robbins was the, was the commenter who was like, hey, could you do a combo guide? So I was like, yeah, why not? That actually sounds like a pretty good idea. And I do like to do it for decks I play relatively regularly, and a virtual world is definitely going to be one of those. Um, I think it's a pretty well-poised deck in the meta, honestly. It's not one of the more popular decks from what I've seen, as far as just like, um... I don't know how actively people talk about playing it, but I definitely do think it is a pretty solid tier two deck. And it's funny, Virtual World has kind of been a solid tier two deck for kind of the entirety of Master Duel's existence so far, mostly because of True King of All Calamities. Let's not lie, this deck is carried not really hard, not really hard, but it's carried pretty decently by this card. Um, st is staying long, relevant longer in Master Duel than it did in the TCG or OCG as a result, for sure. Um, again, the deck I think would still be good without it, but definitely I don't think would be tier two. So it'd probably be closer to rogue tier. Um, all right, so that is all I've got for that. So yeah, this is the build that we're going to be using for the combo guide. It's the build I've been using in the last few videos that I've played Adventure Virtual World. Um, I'll go through it here real quick just to you know say that I did, and so we all know what all cards are in the deck, and then we'll go take a look at some uh, not games hands that we can uh, and see what we can make with them. So. We are playing three Maxi, three Ash Blossom and Joy Spring, three Virtual Hime Nyan Nyan, three Virtual My or sorry, two Virtual Hime Nyan Nyan, three Virtual My Hime Lulu, three Virtual uh, Shi Zi Zizi. I think <laughs> I can never uh, these, some of these names. I, I never can be sure. You know. Uh, anyway, two Water Enchantress of the Temple, two Water uh, Virtual World Roshi Lao Lao, three Virtual Kirin Lili. 
one Wandering Griffin Rider, one Nibiru the Primal Being, one Foolish Burial, three Virtual World City Kowloon, two Rite of Armasir, one Drakerback the Rideable Dragon, two Virtual World Gate Kinglong, one Fateful Adventure, two Emergency Teleport, two Call by the Grave, two Cross Out Designator, two Virtual World Gate Chuchi, and one Virtual World Gate Shanwu. Down here in the extra deck, we have one Stardust Charge Warrior, one Coral Dragon, one Virtual Beast Jewy Jewy, I think, uh, one Cloud Castle, one Vermilion Dragon Mech, one Ravenous Crocodile Dragon Arceus, one Virtual QB Shen Shen, one Baron de Fleur, one Sword Soul Supreme Sovereign Chang Ying, one Consoler Ptolemy M7, one Number Thirty Nine Utopia Beyond, one Virtual Phoenix Fan Fan, one Gaia Dragon the Thunder Charger. One True King of All Calamities, and then one Divine Arsenal Ah Zeus Sky Thunder. So yeah, that is the build again that we're going to be pulling these hands from. Uh, I think it's a fairly standard build. Um, has all the important stuff. Isn't doing anything too extra. So I think it's a good representation for uh, what the deck is capable of. So let's go ahead and take a look at some uh, combos now. Okay, so this is the first hand that we pulled from here, and this is a hand that's actually got a lot of play potential. Now, one thing that I think some people might have a misconception about, it's actually, I, I'm, whenever I say that, it's I'm basically kind of drawing from my own experience for the most part, and slightly from what I see other people say, but this was more of one that I experienced before, you know? When I was first learning about virtual worlds, playing against them, not even playing with them, just playing against them, I thought they kind of needed to have a virtual world gate on board to start their combos, like, but no, you can definitely do it with monsters on board as well. And this hand is going to be a good showcase of showing how we can do just that. So I'm actually going to lead with the emergency teleport here because I'd really like to get my virtual ga um, that gate, my virtual world Hime Nyan Nyan out onto the board. Uh, Etelli can pull both Nyan Nyan and Lulu. It's typically better to grab Nyan Nyan. Um, because obviously, not obviously, ideally rather, um, you would rather have Lulu in hand to use that effect, although there are some times where you do need to pull Lulu from the deck in order to get your play started. We can just pull a Nyan Nyan in this case though, and we'll just throw it right over there. Now that we have a Virtual World card on the field, because it doesn't necessarily have to be a gate, as long as it's a Virtual World card, uh, that's the most important part. So, I uh, know that we have a virtual, virtual World card in play, I'm going to go ahead and use Lulu. Lulu is probably like the most important of the Virtual World cards for comboing and it's very often going to be how you start your plays. Uh, Lulu can basically get whatever you need to make the rest of your plays, because sometimes you might need a gate, sometimes you might need a monster, and Lulu can get you either. Lulu's also really good at setting up your graveyard, um, and can do so just, again, very effectively. So, here I definitely want to get a Virtual Gate Chuchi up, because the ideal board you're looking to end on, um, at the very least, is going to be True King of All Calamities plus Virtual Gate Chuchi if possible. That is going to enable you to stop your opponent from pretty much activating any monster effects uh, at all, as well as uh, offering some negation protection. But we'll talk about when we get to that point in the combo. So, uh, anyway, I'm going to use Lulu's effect here. Uh, now, all the virtual world effects have a condition where, in order to activate them, you target a card, a virtual world card that's already on your field, then you can summon that monster from your hand, and then you manipulate virtual world cards from between the deck, graveyard, and hand based on the ones that you did not select on the field. So, basically what that means is, uh, because we're picking a monster, the cards we're going to be interacting with in our deck are going to be a spell and a trap card. Uh, so it always pays to keep that in mind with Virtual World. So as far as what we send, what we want to send to the graveyard, we want to think about what we want to add, right? We want to add Kowloon. Kowloon's going to let us activate Chu Chi from our deck. So we want to add a Kowloon, so we should send a trap card. So I'm going to send the Shan Wu. Uh, we don't really use the onboard effect for this card very much. It's more about the graveyard effects. You bring a Virtual World monster back from the graveyard, which can definitely help us not only extend our combos, but also potentially play through disruption as well. So uh, I'm going to send that one. That'll let me special summon the Lulu here, and then I get to add a spell because I sent a trap card. So I want to add Kowloon because, like I mentioned, I want to activate Chu Chi for my deck, and Kowloon is going to allow me to do just that. Now I can throw this right here. All right, now while I'm at it, I might as well summon uh, Gigi as well. Uh, Gigi will send a virtual monster, or sorry, a virtual card again, other another type other than the one we select on the field uh, to the graveyard, and then during the end phase we'll add one from graveyard to hand, so um, GG's more of an extender than anything else, but also is good for setting up stuff in grave. The add effect is just kind of a nice bonus, it's not really why we're using GG, so... Uh, I'll activate Gigi's effect. I want to send a spell, particularly I want to send a King Long uh, to further extend my plays and give me more options, so it doesn't matter if I pick a monster or a trap here. Uh, I'll just pick the Chuchi though, because why not? 
So now we can send a monster or a spell to the graveyard because we picked a trap. Again, I want to send a king long, so I'm going to, well, send that. And now we can summon here. So now the order that we do things doesn't super duper matter, but it kind of might matter a little bit. It depends what kind of responses you want to probe for. Um, we can search for the King Long now. Obviously, if our opponent had an Ash, she would have done it by now because um, the virtual cards all interact with the deck. They are all very Ash. Well, uh, Nyan Nyan doesn't. Nyan Nyan interacts with the Graveyard and Banish. But other than Nyan Nyan, all the virtual cards interact with the deck, so they're all very Ashable. Um, so here, though, let me think for a second. We definitely want to sync with the Nyan Nyan to get it engraved so that way we can get the effect out later. I actually should have done that first now that I think about it. Because then I could have summoned the Gigi and brought out the Nyan Nyan. It doesn't really matter too much. That's, a, that's actually another kind of nice thing about Virtual World. It's like, eh, you might make a Meyer slip up like that. But usually you can find a way to like recoup for it later. It doesn't usually end up mattering too much. So uh, I'm going to go for a Stardust Charge Warrior. Uh, Stardust Charge Warrior is a good way to get stuff like you want uh, engraved like Nyan Nyan. Uh, we'll also add a draw to the um, combo line here, which will potentially further extend us. So I want to do that before I start, like, you know, searching for stuff in particular, uh, is see what we get off a of draw first. So again, we'll send those two because we want Nyan Nyan to come back later. And we can throw down a Stardust Charge Warrior here. It doesn't really matter. We're not really Link Summoning at all, so it doesn't super matter what zone you put things in. It still it kind of matters, as it always kind of matters, but tends not to. And we drew a Nyan Nyan, so, I mean, whatever, we're not going to need that, so, um, let me think here for a second. We could either normal summon the Gigi or the Nyan Nyan we just drew, and that would let us bring back the Nyan Nyan as a tuner. We could also banish the Sean Wu from the graveyard to bring back the Lulu as a tuner, but, um... I think Sean Wu is going to be useful for later stuff, so we can just normal summon one of these. Like like I said, I mean, yeah, technically we should have made this first, and then summon the Gigi, and then that would have brought back the Nyan Nyan. And then we wouldn't have to normal summon or use Sean Wu here, but using the normal summon isn't really a big deal at all here. So, um, yeah, we'll just go ahead and use Nyan Nyan, that's fine. And we can activate the Nyan Nyan in our grave to bring it back as a tuner. Now we can either sync for another 6 or another 9. I'm going to go for a 9 for another draw here. I'm going to go for the Ravenous Crocodragon using that Nyan Nyan and the Stardust Charge Warrior. Just because, again, I want to get more draws in before I start searching with King Long. That's the thing, too. We haven't even used King Long yet, so we can get Roshi Lao Lao. This is actually... I think we can set up a Shen Shen in addition to the True King and the uh, Chu Chi here. I'm pretty sure we should be able to. No, I don't, don't want to use any of those. We we draw an Ash Blossom, which is an, is not an extender, but it's definitely still very nice, of course. So, um, yeah, we're definitely going to activate the King Long. Oh, you know what? I know exactly how we can do this, too. Um, yeah, we're going to add the Lao Lao. Because we still have... Okay, we have a Lulu Engrave. Um, yeah, and then we can just send this Gigi in deck. Or in hand, sorry, not in hand. Yeah, I was just making sure that we had those in grave. I think I'm going to end up bringing back, let's see, Lao Lao to bring back Lulu, and then we can use Lao Lao to send the Chu Chi that's in deck for more level adjusting. Yeah, that's how we can do this. So we're going to use Lao Lao's effect. Actually, you know what? We can do this. God, there's a lot of different ways we can do this. This is what I love about this deck. So anyway, we want to send a Chu Chi, so I'm going to pick a monster, because if we pick a trap, we can't send a trap. So um, yeah, we're going to send that Chu Chi. And I'm sure there is a more optimal way to do this, but like with this deck, it's just I think it's really just more about getting there, honestly. <laughs> At least it is for me. Maybe this that's just more of a struggle on my end than anything else, but uh Let me see something real quick. Is this only when it's secret summoned I draw? Yeah, it's only when it's secret summoned. So, okay, if I make Shen Shen, and then I lower Shen Shen's level, and then I use that to make Cloud Castle. Technically, I can save this in Nyan Nyan. I don't have to use that as a material if we bring back Lulu here and do it that way. All right, so yeah, this is also another way that you can make, as opposed to just summoning two level nines and then going into the, uh... oh wait, hang on a second. Oh, no, 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 this is right, this is right, I have two tuners out. I thought it was asking me to sync with the Lulu and the Lala, and that, like, broke my brain for a second. I was like, wait, what? That can't be right. No, okay, so yeah, so we'll do... Uh, Lao Lao plus, uh, uh, we'll do the Nyan Nyan to get the Nyan Nyan engraved. We'll leave the Gigi on board. So yeah, you know, we're gonna summon the Shen Shen here, right? And we could just stack these two to make the True King. We can actually end up in a scenario where we can leave the Shen Shen on board. We're gonna do it like this. We're gonna use that Chu Chi that we sent to the graveyard earlier, right? We're gonna banish that. We're gonna adjust this thing's level from 9 down to 6. 
That'll let us sink for level nine. We can get Cloud Castle using Lulu and Shen Shen. We'll summon that here. Again, it doesn't particularly matter because we don't really use Lynx in this deck. I don't think we use Lynx at all in this deck. And then we can use Cloud Castle to bring back the Shen Shen that we just use as a material. So even if this line, even though if there probably were better ways to do it, like at least I got to show a lot of different things that you can do here. So now we can go into the Shrew King using the uh, Draco and the Cloud Castle. I don't want to use the Shen Shen as well. Oops. I don't want to use the Shen Shen as well. It's, you don't really need three materials on the True King. You can, I guess, if you really want to, but I like having the Shen Shen up for the Banish effect better, honestly. Okay, so now, as you can see, we've got a really strong setup going into our opponent's turn here. We, of course, we have the Sea and the Ash in the hand, which is super awesome. We have a Shen Shen up, so anything on Grave will be sent to the Banish instead, which is definitely relevant against a good number of decks. And most importantly, we have the True King plus the Chu Chi up. So, what this is going to do is, what you want to do at this point is, you know, flip this to On and then go to End. Uh, don't activate this during your turn. Wait till your opponent's turn. Oh, we get to add back with the GG. We'll just bring back uh, Lulu, why not? Okay, and then now during the opponent's draw phase, what you want to do is activate the True King of All Calamities effect. Um, we can detach, doesn't really matter, we'll detach the Arctheus. And the attribute doesn't, like, okay, it kind of matters if you know what your opponent is playing. Obviously, if you know what they're playing, because you want to be able to stop effects activating in the hand and graveyard if possible as well. So you want to pick the attribute that has the most monster effects in your opponent's deck that activate in the hand and graveyard to keep those from activating as well as on-field effects that the True King is going to change to that attribute type. That's obviously going to vary from deck to deck. If you're blind calling it like this, then... I typically think light or dark is the way to go. In this particular meta, oh my god, there's like so many different things. Um, you could even pick water to hit like the water enchantress from the adventure line if you really wanted to. Or the wind maybe to hit the wandering griffin rider. It's ultimately arbitrary. I usually like light or dark. I guess we'll just pick light, um, you know isn't like the end of the world and then let's say your opponent activates like an infinite permanence here what you can do is then you can chain the chushi and actually destroy your own true king of all calamities which might seem a little bit weird if you've never like you know played this deck or like had this done to you um but yeah if they activate the imperm here you chain the chushi and you return yeah you know whatever you need to return here we'll put back i don't know a king long and uh lulu why not or yeah not i mean and then you pop your own True King, and the Imperm doesn't resolve because your target is no longer on the board, but um, Chu Chi doesn't negate and destroy, it only destroys, so your True King effect will still resolve. So, um, yeah, that is a pretty basic turn one setup. Well, not, not, not the most basic one. The basic one is kind of just the True King plus the Chu Chi, but uh, that is like a full turn one setup with no virtual gate being opened, so... Um, just goes to show like what this deck is capable of and again there might have been a slightly more efficient route to do it but as you can see you can just kind of like freestyle it <laughs> and you'll get there so um, cool that is that hand there let's go ahead and take a look at another one all right so I'm pretty glad I opened this hand because this is gonna allow me to show like kind of what I think of as like the quote-unquote core combo of virtual world where if you know how to play out a combo with Lulu and Kowloon, then that is going to teach you like all the basics you really need to know about comboing with Virtual World, right? Um, and from there, it, it's pretty easy to spot like offshoots of that play, and that will kind of help you feel the more fluidity of like how this deck combos. So um, with this hand, I'm going to kind of do what I do with my other combo guides, where um, even though we already also opened GG and Itali and Griffin Rider, like, this is just a phenomenal hand altogether. But let's even pretend that GG, Griffin Rider, and Itali are all just like dead cards. And let's assume that we only have really Lulu and Kowloon as the only live combo cards in our hand. And let's talk about and establish what we can do with just those cards, right? So, of course, we want to begin by activating our Kowloon. Uh, now, going first, you pretty much always want to lay Chu Chi down. In fact, in general, you pretty much always want to lay a Chu Chi down. The only situation where you'd really want to lay down, like, a King Wong is if you're going second and your opponent's got, like, you know, a Wandering Griffin Rider or, like, another Omni Negate card on the board. And if they let the Kowloon resolve, then you can use, uh, get you know, get a King Long, use King Long's effect, banish the Kowloon, and then negate their Omni Negate monster's effect. But, um, again, going first, you just pretty much always want to set up a Chu Chi, right? So... Now that we have a virtual card on the field, let's go ahead and activate Lulu's effect. 
Now, we're going to send one type of card to the graveyard and then add the other. And because we selected a trap card, our two card types to choose from are monster and spell. So, we definitely want to add a monster, so let's send a spell. And we definitely want to send a spell anyway. We want to send one of these King Longs to do some searching here. Now we can summon the Lulu. And then we get to add a card from deck to hand. We're going to add a monster. I'm going to add a Lili here. Um... You could make arguments for potentially adding other things, but Lili in general, if you've only got Lulu and Kowloon, then I think Lili is probably the next uh, best thing to add there. Okay, so now we can even use Lili's effect right off the bat here. Um, I think I do want to send a monster. I think ideally I would like to send a monster and a trap here, but um, I don't have a spell to pick, so um, I'm going to pick the Chuchi and send a monster and a spell, I think. Yeah, I would ideally like to send a Sean Wu to the graveyard, the trap card that you know brings one back from the graveyard, a monster, but we can do that later anyway, so I don't think it's that big of a deal. Okay, so as far as the monster, I definitely want to establish a Nyan Nyan in the graveyard. We'll throw this here. And then we can, we'll just send another King Long. Actually, I'm thinking maybe I should just send a Kowloon. Yeah, we'll send another cow. We'll send a cow. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so we've got these on the field, but I actually don't want to synchro with these just yet. I'm going to use my King Along effect first, and this is where you need another card in hand. But again, if you're going first, it can just be like any random card. It doesn't have to be a specific one. Um, and now, let's see here. Uh, so we've already used Lulu. We already have Nyan Nyan in Grave, and we've already used Lili. So the only things left to add are Gigi and Lao Lao. Um, you could really add either in this case. Like, if you want to make it simple, you could just add Lao Lao and then use Lao Lao to bring back the Nyan Nyan and then just go for your two level nines, and then boom, you've got a true king right there. But I think we can do a little bit better than that, maybe. Um, like, get some extra draws and or maybe set up some extra stuff in there, and I think we can do that if we add Gigi. I'm just trying to think real quick. We add Gigi, send Sean Wu, sync Lulu and Gigi into Stardust Charge Warrior, then we're going to use Sean Wu to bring back Lulu. That'll bring back Nyan Nyan as a tuner. And then we can make two level nines that way. So, um, yeah, we'll just add Gigi. Because that'll get us an extra draw at the very least. And might also um, get some more extensive or disruptive plays. Who knows? We'll just send the other Gigi. Again, we're assuming that those were dead cards. So, now that we've searched the Gigi, uh, we can activate it. And we want to send a trap card. So, we want to pick one of the monsters for Gigi's effect here. It doesn't matter which one. We can just do Lulu. And because we want to send the Shondwood to the graveyard. We'll send GG here. And we could activate Nyan Nyan's effect now. We can also do it later when we bring back Lulu. Um, I don't think it's going to eat up too much space if we do it now. So we'll just do it now just to say that we did it. Oops. Yeah, we'll summon that right there. Alright, and now we can sync for the Stardust Charge Warrior. I'll use Lulu and GG. Alright, that's going to get us our extra draw here. And so yeah, we drew in a bureau, so definitely not bad to get extra draws when possible. Um, so now we can even just sink into the Ravenous Croco right now. Let's just do that and see what our next draw is going to be. And again, we'll chain block the draw just to say that we did it, even though it doesn't particularly matter. Actually, you kind of maybe shouldn't put this back because of the Chu Chi, but I mean, we're going to banish the Sean Wu anyway, so it doesn't really matter, but you can kind of make arguments either way, I don't know. Yeah, we just drew another GG, whatever. It's not relevant, but it's not not a terrible draw either, I guess. So, yep, yeah, we'll just banish the Sean Wu now. And we're going to want to bring back the Lulu because that's a tuner, and we need another tuner here. And we'll send, uh, I don't know, why not, the GG we just drew. And from there, we can sink into the Shen Shen. Obviously, you want to make Shen Shen always one of the level 9s that you use. That way, you can bring it back during your turn and uh, have a recurring threat. And then, of course, from there, we stack into the truest king of all calamities. We'll just throw him right over there. And there you go. That's a very bare-bones way to establish your... Um, again, what I consider like the ideal quote-unquote standard turn one ending board of True King plus the Chu Chi. So um, there's a lot of different ways you can do it with Lulu plus Kowloon, but I think that's one of the more like standard or basic ones right there. So yeah, I, again, I would consider that a very you know quote-unquote core combo. If you know how to do that line, 
it's only minor adjustments to do pretty much every other line. Um, it's more just kind of figuring out how to get the stuff on the field as opposed to like what specific order to do it in a lot of the time. So I'll still show off another hand or two here as we go into, uh, yeah, we'll show off the next combo here. Okay, so I actually like this hand as an example as well. Um, it might look a little bit awkward, because it's like, oh, we got a lot of good tools in our hand, like Ash called by Crosso, but all we really have is Gigi and Lili. Is that enough to combo with? Well, it's definitely enough to make plays with. Let's see what kind of plays we can make with a hand like this. Get a normal summon Gigi, so that way we have a virtual card, a virtual world card on the field. We can use that with Lili here. All right, now because we're selecting a monster and Lili sends two cards to the graveyard, we're going to send each a spell and a trap card. Definitely want to establish the King Long in the graveyard. Uh, that is pretty much always the most important card to get in the graveyard, especially if you have an awkward looking hand like this. Uh, King Long for Lulu is able to fix a lot of awkward looking hands. So uh, we also get to send another card. I'll definitely send the Shad Wu here. All right, now we can use the graveyard effect of King Long to go ahead and, like I said, search up probably just a Lulu here, I have to imagine. But is there something better we could potentially get? Let me think for a second. Um, what are we trying to set up in the graveyard? I'd like to get a Nyan Nyan in the graveyard if possible, but I'm going to need a spell or a trap card, a virtual gate on the field in order to do that. The only way to get one would be to search up Kowloon with Lulu, so I think that still makes Lulu the best choice here. I just want to make sure that's going to be the case. I definitely don't want Nyan Nyan because I've already normal summoned it. Nyan Nyan can't special from hand. Uh, I could special a Gigi, but I don't think just sending one card, a spell or a trap really does anything here. I've already used Lili, and I don't think Lao Lao really does anything here without anything to bring back. So yep, it is going to be Lulu. And we'll just send the Ash Blossom. I think I'd rather send the Ash Blossom in a case like this and keep the call by and the cross out. Although Ash could be better for next turn as well. I'll just send Ash though. All right, now we can activate Lulu's effect. Doesn't matter which one we target because there's both monsters. And uh, let's see, now we're gonna send one and add the other. So we definitely wanna send a Chu Chi because we wanna add a Kowloon. Set up the Lulu like so, and add the designated card. We're gonna add a Kowloon, as I mentioned before. Now let's activate our Kowloon. And we'll definitely just get a Chu Chi to set that up here. Okay, so now we can start making some synchro plays. We'll start, let's see, we have a Sean Wu in Graveyard, so we can always bring the Lulu back. Um, we'll start with the Stardust Charge Warrior here, I think. Let me think for a moment, I just wanna make sure. That is, in fact, what I want to do. No, 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 what am I saying? I don't want Stardust Charge Warrior. Don't I want, uh... Well, actually, does it doesn't really matter. No, 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 it actually does matter here. I'm glad I thought about this. It doesn't matter, because here's the thing, right? If we send this and this for Stardust Charge Warrior, we can bring back the Sean... We can use the Sean Wu to bring back Lulu and then make a level 9, but then we have a Stardust Charge Warrior and a level 9. But if we send this and this to make a level 9, then we can use a Shanbu to bring back the Lulu, and then we have a Lulu and a Gigi, and we can use Chuchi to make either level 9, and then we can make two level 9s. Got it. So, see, that's why I like to talk or, like, think these plays out, even though they seem really standard, just to make sure you're doing it in the right order, because it's really easy to make a minor slip up, like I was about to do there, and make Stardust Charge Warrior, but no, we actually want to make um, a level 9 here, the Arctheus. We'll make Arctheus for the draw. I'll slap that down right here. And like I said, draw ourselves a card. Wow, that's a really good draw. That's a really good draw. So from here, let's see. I mean, from here, yeah, we'll just do the adventure line. Why not? And we can add this. I'm just trying to th I'm just trying to make sure in my head real quick that it's not going to mess this up. I don't think it will actually at all, so we'll just do it. See, that's the other, like, really, really cool thing about adventure, not adventure, about virtual worlds, rather, is that, like, inadvertent, you get lots of, like, little inadvertent draws with your combo, so, um, you're always, like, getting advantage on the side, too. It's just, it makes the deck already, like, more ridiculous than it already is. Yeah, we're gonna bring back the Lulu here, for sure. And then, uh, we'll discard the called by, eh, cross out. I think I think I'll discard the cross out there, if I hadn't used either. And now we can add this. Don't equip it. Use the fateful adventure effect. We'll get the Griffin. Pitch the Draco back. This is all pretty standard adventure stuff. Activate Draco back. 
equip the token. Oops, no, don't activate that. I mean, we are going to activate that, just not right this second. All right, and then... Um, yeah, we'll just use the Griffin Rider next. It's gonna... I'd rather the Griffin Rider be in this spot, technically, but whatever. It's fine here. Oops, don't change the phase. Let's activate the Chuchi effect. Adjusting either Gigi or Lulu doesn't particularly matter. We'll just do Gigi, just to make sure that we uh, increase the level of the monster. So now that we have a 3 and a 6, we can go for a 9 here with Shen Shen. We'll drop that there. And finally, we get to set up the truest king of all of them, Calamities. We'll throw that right over here. Yeah, so now we have that. We even got an adventure line set up there because we were able to t rip the uh, uh, right of our, or the uh, water enchantress rather off the top of our deck. So yeah, that's a pretty basic setup. And again, GG plus um, Lili might look a little bit awkward and like it might not even be a combo. But as you can see, it's a very standard uh, True King plus Chuchi combo. That's that's the other thing about this deck too. It really surprises you. But it's not like any combination of virtual cards you open will get you a combo. But it's it's a lot more of them than you might think just uh glancing at or passively playing against the deck so um i don't i'm trying to think if i should do one more hand here i'll see if i can get there's kind of one hand i want to show off in particular that's another like dead looking hand that i had recently that actually ended up being live let me see if i can get it okay so this isn't the hand that i had in mind when i said i had an interesting hand recently that i wanted to see if i could replicate but I don't think I've had a hand like this, but I actually see an interesting line. Because this hand's looking... It's its weird, right? So we have, like, Foolish and Kowloon and Itelli, and that looks, like, really good by themselves. But I don't know if it's going to be... Because here's the thing. The Foolish is going to set up the Adventure line, right? So we have access to that. The Itelli grabs the Lulu from the deck, and the Kowloon slaps down... You would think Chu Chi, right? But then, even if we normal summon Nyan Nyan... That just sinks for a Stardust Charge Warrior, and that doesn't really do anything by itself. In addition, of course, to the Adventure Line. Or you could go for a Baron. But then I was thinking, oh, if you go for Baron, you could do some interesting setups. So let me... I'm going to try something a little experimental here. I've never had a hand like this, so let me, let me, let me see something real quick. This is, the, this is the thing about Adventure World, though. Like, Adventure World. Did I say Adventure World? I think I said Adventure World, which might be my new favorite name for the deck. So <laughs> maybe I'll stick with it. Who knows? Yeah, so we're going to use Foolish to set up the adventure line. And that, by the way, what I was going to say is this is the thing about virtual world is that it's really, sometimes it is just about like seeing what you can do, you know, with a hand like this. Like a, a hand that is a little bit, not off, but like, because it's definitely a good hand, but it's not an obvious like what you do with this hand. So one of the main things that I try to think about with Virtual World, right, as far as, like, what kind of a setup am I trying to do here, one of the things I think about most often is, like, can I get a King Long into the graveyard? If I can get a King Long set up in the graveyard for the search for the Lulu, you can probably do just about whatever you want. Not always, but it's it's more likely than not, I think, so. Okay, then we'll place a card. Okay, now what I'm going to do is activate... Hang on, let me see something. Okay, just want to make sure. I didn't think there were any conditions. I, I should know that, but you, know, you, you always want to read the cards. Always want to practice your ability to read. It's uh, the most important skill to practice as a Yu-Gi-Oh player. So uh, let's special the Lulu. Activate the adventure effect to add the Draco back. Now we can use the adventure's effect to add the Griffin Rider. Discarding the Draco back because we need pretty much all this other stuff in hand. Okay, activate Draco back's effect, equip it to the token, right? And sure, yeah, we'll just use Griffin Rider's effect now. That's fine. Okay, special this. And equip this. Now, again, with Kowloon, you would think you would want to activate Choo Chi because that's, I mean, I even said earlier, that's what you do pretty much all the time, but not all the time. I think this is a case where we don't get Choo Chi. I think we get a King Long here. And then we can do this, right? We can summon Baron using Lulu and Griffin Rider. And now we can activate Baron's effect to pop our own King Long. Now we can use King Long's graveyard effect to add a Lulu. But we can't discard this Nyan Nyan, which it looks like you might want to do here. 
but we have to keep it to normal summon it so we can use Lulu's effect. So we actually have to discard the call by here. Alright, summon Nyan Nyan, activate Lulu. And we definitely want to send... Okay, so... I want to send Sean Wu, because I have to do that to extend my plays here. So we'll do that, yeah, okay. Uh, and then add, we get to add a spell. It doesn't really matter which one we add, I think. Actually, it kind of does. Okay, we're going to add a King Wong. Wait, let me think for a second. Does it actually matter? So I sink for... I actually, you know what? It might. Okay, I'm going to add the King Wong, because we might need a gate on board. I'm just trying to think, okay, what are we doing from here? Um... Oh, wait, do I have... Oh, I have a Lulu Engrave, okay. But I don't think that matters. I definitely want the Nyan Nyan Engrave, so... Let me think. We sink for Charge Warrior. Summon, summon. Then both back as Tuners. I and mean, we could at the very least make a Shen Shen alongside the Baron, but we could potentially do even more depending on what we draw with the Charge Warrior. Are we going for Charge Warrior for sure? Is there not something else we'd rather go for? Um, I could go for Coral Dragon and sink the Coral Dragon and the token into the Cheng Ying. And then draw a card that way instead of making a Charge Warrior. I definitely think I like that better because it makes... Well, but... Then we bring them both... But then we can't... Okay, so... No, because then we can't go into a Shen Shen. So, we have to kind of pick here. Do we want to go into Shen Shen or do we want to go into Cheng Ying? And I think Shen Shen is going to offer us more potential options depending on what we get with the draw here. So let's go for Charge Warrior. Um, I don't think I need to put it up here. But we're not going to Link Summon, so I guess I might as well. There's kind of no reason not to. I don't think, anyway. I mean, we don't Link Summon, so... Ooh, we drew a Lao Lao. That's... That's really fucking good, actually. Wow, that's super good. Hold on. Oh my god, that's going to let us set up a True King. Um, okay, let me think. So, because if I Sean Wu and bring him back, they're all tuners. But if I use King Long, which I'm really glad I searched this now, because I thought I might need it if I drew a Virtual World card. So now we can use the Lao Lao, picking the King Long. We can send either a monster or a trap card. We'll send the Choo Choo in case we need to do some level adjusting, which I don't think we will. But actually, because we sent that, we might be able to pull off, like, Shen Shen plus the... Oh my god, plus the True King, plus the Baron? Is this hand actually nuts? This hand might actually be the Stone Cold Nuts. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna summon a Nyan Nyan for sure. Okay, so let me think. I sink these into Shen Shen. And then I... Let's see, I have a 9, a 6. 3, 3, 6. Oh my god, this is totally... Oh my god. Oh, Jesus, this hand is... Pretty disgusting, isn't it? Do I have to make Shen Shen now, or can I make the Croco Dragon now? If I make the Croco Dragon now, put that here. The Sean Wu banishes, summons the Lulu, summons the Nyan Nyan as a tuner. Sink for Shen Shen. Lower Shen Shen's level, sink for Cloud Castle. Yeah, so I can make the Croco Dragon now. I don't have to do that first. I don't have to do that second, rather. I didn't think so, I just wanted to make sure that was actually the case. Okay, and then, yeah, now, like I said, we... Actually, hang on, could I have made Cheng Ying? What if I had done that instead? Like, what if I would brought back a level 3 tuner? I could have made Shen Shen plus Cheng Ying, actually, but then I couldn't have made True King, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think I could have, okay. So, anyway, we'll use Sean Wu's effect now, like I said. And we'll bring back a Lulu. Oops. That here, there we go, thank you. And then, discard that Lao Lao we drew. Oh, so no, we had to do it that way in order to get the card to draw, that's right, so. I'm glad I d did it that way. Well, I guess I couldn't have done it any other way, so. Okay, so now, like I said, we're going to go for Shen Shen. And then we can use the Choo Chi effect. To scale this level down to six. Now we go for Cloud Castle. Uh, 
And then Cloud Castle F. We can even chain block it with the Nyan Nyan. You know, obviously, if our opponent would have had a response, they, they assuredly would have done it by this point. We'll put back the non virtual world card. Uh, this, I, don't know, I, I should have thought a little bit more about that, but it usually doesn't really matter that much. Actually, I shouldn't have put that back now that I think about it because my adventure engine isn't really online anymore, but whatever, it doesn't matter. And then finally, we can go for the. Oh my god, so we did end up making the true king alongside a baron, alongside a Shen Shen, so. Um, yeah, this hand was definitely actually just the Stone Cold Nuts. I'm really glad I showed this hand off. So, again, hands that might not look obviously, like, great like that. Like, I mean, I don't know. I, with Foolish plus all the things we opened, like, it did seem like a pretty good hand. But I definitely didn't think it was going to end on all this when I started that combo. Um, I've talked about this before in the past, but this is definitely... Virtual World is one of those decks where I definitely... I call it Michael Scotting the combos because like that Michael Scott scene in the office where he's like, sometimes I'll start a sentence, I don't even know how it ends, I just hope I find it along the way. This is the kind of board we just find along the way sometimes. So definitely just goes to show the power of virtual world and the um, importance to be import or how important it is rather uh, to be flexible when playing a deck like this. So, okay, I'm definitely satisfied with the hands that we've shown. Uh, so let's go ahead and move on now to the outro. Okay, everybody, thank you for watching all the way to the very end like this. I definitely appreciate that, and I really hope that uh, at least some of you were able to find this video helpful when it comes to, like, how to make plays with virtual worlds. Again, this was a rather inconventional take on how I usually do combo guides, where, again, we focus less on specific combinations of cards and more just took a look at how to spot plays in hands. I think I kind of did this with Adam Emancipator a little bit as well, if I remember right, like, way back in the day. I say way back in the day, like it was just like, like it was years ago. It was just a few months ago, but um, yeah, it's just these some of these combo decks. Again, you might look at a combo guide and see like eight or again eight or nine different possible combinations and be like, that's really intimidating. Uh, I don't feel like I can memorize that. But again, with those kinds of decks, those kind of actually in ways tend to be easier to memorize because uh, you just play the deck enough, get a feel for it, and you'll find out how to combo on your own. So. Um, but again, I just hope that this video and me explaining my thought process as I'm looking for these plays uh, was helpful to those of you who are learning how to play Virtual World, which again, I've talked about this before. Um, Virtual World doesn't get talked about a whole lot as far as people playing it from what I see, but I still think this is a very solid tier two deck. And if you're looking for a deck to ladder with, this is definitely uh, one that I would recommend for sure. So. Um, but, yep, yeah, like I said, thank you for watching all the way to the end, and thank you to those who are commenting and subscribing. If you have any suggestions, I'm always open to those, so feel free to leave them in the comments. And uh, for subscribing, yep, a good way to support the channel, and uh, it keeps you up to date of when my videos drop, which does happen every day. So if you subscribe, you do get a daily Master Duel video out of me. But that's all I've got for this one, so without further ado, this is XLex. I'm signing off. I hope you have a fantastic day.